So Steve, sometimes, you know, I'm a little nervous when it comes to just taking a beautiful flower and ripping off the top of it. You know, I know that it can help my garden, but how do I do it right? Yeah, Kelly, um, you can do it uh, a couple of different ways. On this particular plant, I'd take off the top part <laughs> of the plant. No, that's fine. <laughs> and uh, the rationale is, is that you want to um, take off the uh, areas where the spent blossoms have gone by. See, but that one was nice, but you cut below it. Well, actually, no. This is actually a f uh, flower that's gone by and set in seed. Oh. Okay. And it's developed in a seed pod. And uh, you really don't want the seed pod to develop here. Mm -hmm. If you want additional plants, this is a, a tiger lily, um, the yellow uh, variety. And it sets seed on the... Um, the uh, axillaries of the of the stem. So um, is that the seed right? That's just the next blossom, isn't it? What is no, that? this is the seed. If okay. um, you wanted additional plants, this seed would mature and either you can collect it or just let it drop naturally and it'll re-establish uh, um, another plant. So if is it ready for me to to pick it off yet? That there isn't ready yet. What does um, it look like when it's ready? Yeah, there's some down here. See if I can pick off for you. They're just about getting mature. Um, they're really, probably in another couple of weeks, they'd be a little bit so more mature. They look a little more dry than this. Yeah, well, yeah, and a little bit bigger. Okay. I'd say more, almost raisin size. Okay. And then when you pick them off, now see, I see some seedlings down at the bottom there of your lilies. Right. That's from probably last year? Yeah, so those are seedlings that uh, are seeds from the plants that dropped on their own. I, I just let them do their own thing that uh, have seeded and started to come along. So like you're saying, if you want these things to go ahead and flourish, let them drop their own seeds. If you right. don't want them to flourish in this particular area, harvest the seeds off and take them away. Right, put them in a packet or whatever and you could uh, drop them this year or, or save them and plant them next year. So should this one be deadheaded off? It's so pretty, I mean. This one here is, uh, you got two you know, good flowers here. You could just dead it here and, and on the back where these are spots where flowers have already gone and, by. Okay, and then wait till those go by, then cut it where? Um, probably after those two go by, I just snip it right at this location. Okay. Now another thing I was wondering is, should I just snap it with my fingers or should I, you're using snippers, should I, we use these sharp tools or is, what's better? Probably the pruners are a better um, all around tool to use. They make a cleaner cut, you know, a nice uh, fresh cut, whereas if you're snapping them it's going to shred the stem and oh, so okay. forth. Impossibility of some uh, problems in, you know, disease wise or something. Let's check out some other ones we can work on. Yeah, Kelly, here we've got a plant that uh, you might be a little bit more concerned or conscientious about uh, trimming back and so forth. Um, this plant's a mallow or malva. Um, uh, some it's people really refer to it. Yeah, it's a real nice plant. However, you want to be a little bit more concerned about um, the seeds maturing and dropping in the garden. Um, it can be a little bit more prolific than some people want in the garden and actually can become a kind of a maintenance concern. So these little... These are all little right seedlings that have dropped um, from the main plant. The seed, uh, the flower went by and the plant uh, set seed and the seeds just dropped. Um, in a typical homeowner garden it might be a, a real concern because there, there's so many of them. Yeah. Um, now these are the seed pods right here? Yes. Yeah. And the time to cut this back is after the flowers have, have gone by like this stem here and these are all different seed pods that haven't matured. Okay. Um, they're still green so if you can snip them now before they ripen um, then you won't have as much mess around unless you want right, it to spread. Right. If you want it to spread or even put them in a, a meadow or something like that, you can let the oh. seed kind of ripen a little bit and still try and snip them before they mature and start dropping in the garden. Hmm. Good idea. Geez, Steve, what's going on here with these poppies? They look dead. Yeah, um, this is an oriental poppy um, and that's a fairly uh, common occurrence. This is what they're going to look like typically um, every season. In some instances, you want to plant that into the garden in terms of planting and so forth. You wouldn't want this to be right in the um, front of the border and not in the main focal point, but something that's uh, kind of worked towards the mid to the back of the garden okay. and have some foliage around it so it kind of camouflages it. it. Right. Um, it's spectacular when it's in flower, but, uh, you know, this time of year it can a little bit yeah. bedraggled. But um, the plant goes no dormant like this and starts mm -hmm. to look uh, almost sickly looking, but mm -hmm. that's normal. and. Uh, the typically um, what you should do is go in at this time of the season and cut back the plant something like this and uh, you start getting a re oh, rebloom yeah. or reflush or growth and actually mm -hmm. can send up um, some second flowering uh, flowers. And you could probably even use those in dried arrangements if you wanted to. Correct? Yeah, you see these used quite often in uh, dried flower arrangements mm -hmm. so that really has a, a dual purpose use. Yeah, get to use them again. That's right. 
Okay, so we're crawling through the tall grass here, Steve. Are we supposed to cut all this stuff back? No, this is an ornamental grass that's been planted on purpose. It's a variegated leaf, so it has a nice uh, visual appeal. It's really pretty. It um, looks like a spider plant. Yeah, it does, actually. It uh, resembles that a little bit. And this really doesn't flower, per se, as one thinks of a flower, but it has these seed uh, plumes oh. that develop and become quite attractive. Uh -huh. um, and you can cut and dry it. Um, or leave it out. We actually leave all the foliage in this, the seed heads here um, through the fall into the winter months so it has like a four season um, effect to it. It really is quite attractive with the ice and snow on it. I was going to say now does it, it doesn't get brown then? It just stays green through the winter? It does have a, a brown tinge to it but even though it's browned it still is uh, quite nice because of the height of it. Okay because it doesn't lay flat or anything. It stays up pretty tall. Unless we get a real heavy ice storm um, typically it stays up through the winter months. But as a, a tall plant in the, in the landscape, uh, intermixed with shrubbery or as a backdrop in the, the perennial border or something like that, an accent plant on the on a, um, landscape, it's, it's really it's quite effective. So, but if you had a small garden, you probably wouldn't, like this kind of a huge plant, you might want right. to use this only in a bigger garden? Yeah, I would say in larger gardens or maybe separate it off into the um, corner of the yard or, or actually worked into a, a foundation planting, landscape planting in the in, the, in front of your home or something as an accent. Mm -hmm. It works quite effectively. This is really sharp. I like it. And the fact that you don't have to do anything to it is even better. Right. So what do we do with the peony? Yeah, here we've got a, a peony um, seed pod that's developed. Um, typically this should have been uh, cut back when the flower went by in the uh, early summer type okay. of thing. This is one that uh, somehow we missed and it's setting up seed and really um, Unless you're doing hybridizing or something like that, you really don't want don't the want seed. seed. You want the, the, the energy to go to the, the root, root of the plant. And if you want additional plants, then the, really the plant should be dug up and divided that so way. So how far back do we cut these? Yeah, this here typically you cut it back to here and this you know removes the, oh, okay. the seed pod and you know the plant isn't bothered at all. So at the end of the season when the, the flowers are looking kind of ready, you just go through your bush and chop them all back to about the first set of leaves. Yes. Is that about right? Yeah, that'd so be fine. So you don't have to mow these down to the ground? Not this time of year. You know, when you're doing the deadheading mm -hmm. of the uh, the seed pods and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, after the flowers go by, that's one uh, round of cutting. And then the second round of cutting is when you prepare the garden for winter. Okay. After a hard frost has, has hit and browned the foliage out, then, then you, you can zip it down. Then you cut it down to the ground level. Kind of feel like Morticia Adams going around and chopping off all the heads, huh? Uh, right, true. <laughs> Now lavender, this is one of my favorites. What do we do with lavender? Yeah, this one's a little bit uh, different than your typical perennial when you cut back in the fall or trim and so forth. Um, we've actually caught in quite a few people, customers and so forth. They have been lo losing them and the, the rationale or what I've uh, traced it down to is that they've actually been cutting it down to the ground. Mm. And uh, this plant's a little bit different for the fact it's almost shrub-like mm. and uh, you don't trim it down to the ground like your regular perennial, you leave it be. Oh, okay, so you, are, you shouldn't hack this one back. No, if you were to prune it, you'd just do some light uh, pruning for shaping purposes okay. only. And really, you should almost do that in the springtime. Okay, now I do trim these little wands. Yeah, the, you the, know, just cut them, cut yeah, them just cut these off and uh, you can use them for potpourri or drying purposes. A lot of people dry them and all that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the lavender is in the herb family, so it has a fairly uh, strong fragr mm -hmm. fragrance to it. Um, and there's another aspect you can do. There, this is uh, called a lavender wand. Mm -hmm. This is a um, customer made this for us. She comes in oh, and, and wow. cuts them. Oh, wow. It smells great right inside there. Yeah, and what she does is, you know, cuts the flowers, and then the flowers are bent around and put inside oh. the, uh, the wand, and, and it's quite decorative. Oh, cool. And uh, I think what this particular lady does is use it for gift, uh, mm. on gift packages and that sort of stuff. So the biggest thing with lavender is you can cut off the wands, but don't trim the foliage all the way down to the ground. That's correct. Yep. Good idea. Yep. So, Steve, now it's the hosta's turn. Your turn, hosta. Yeah. <laughs> what we've got here is uh, the hosta, and uh, it's done its flowering, and now the, the flowers have set seed, and really... Um, there's no advantage to leaving these on. Or there's no so you drying. Can't harvest these seeds and typically not. Yeah. Um, and there's no drying aspect here. Yeah. Where some plants you can cut back for drying yeah. and so forth. Um, these here really have no uh, visual interest as opposed to the grass or anything mm -hmm. like that. So chop them back out. Yeah. What you do is just kind of trim these back to say just um, into the foliage, You're just above the foliage. So when you view the plant. Um, you really don't see any evidence. It melts, melts right in there. Yep. And then the plant, uh, you know, has a nice uh, 
curb appeal, the foliage kind of stands out nice and, and so forth. And so you should wait till the flower dries up like this on the top? Yeah, I mean, typically, after once the, the last flower goes by, you can do it any time at that point. Okay. Um, now, is this also a time to divide hosta? Um, I would wait um, till a little bit later in okay. the season, 1st uh, of September, mid-September. Generally, we start getting a little bit cooler weather and some moisture is a fine time, or in the springtime, okay. just as the new growth starts emerging out of the ground. Right. Uh, is a good time for that. Good. Just keep hacking. Yeah, it'll just keep the chopping back and... Uh, enhancing the plant. So do we hack back Veronica all the way down to the ground? No, this is another plant we you know leave the foliage on, um, do any light pruning and so forth. Come spring months, if you see some dieback and so forth, you can um, you know do the you know deadheading of yeah. the of the flowers um, mm -hmm. that uh, we've done on other plants. But you just take it down to the you know the the bottom of the where the stem meets the the plant. And it still has a nice uh, now curb it's ready appeal. For winter. Yep. And this particular plant's um, a Veronica that has a gray foliage, yep. so you have dual usage of.